Good evening and welcome to this special presentation of Coffee and Headlines. And as you can see, Brandon and James are already here yeah. with us. We don't want to waste any time in getting a chance to meet these wonderful two performers that are going to be here in Puerto Vallarta uh, for a special concert on December 30th at Teatro Vallarta. But right now they are sitting at Palm Springs where they have just landed a few hours ago and they are getting ready for their very first ever holiday show in Palm Springs at the Purple Room with special guest star Effie Passero. Gentlemen, it's such a pleasure to have you here. How are you doing? Thank you, Paco. It's so nice to be here. Um, we're doing well. We're, we're doing well. It was a long travel day, but we're feeling energetic, sort of. Excellent. <laughs> Thank goodness for caffeine and showers. <laughs> I sound, that sounds absolutely wonderful. For those people that are tuning in, I am very much looking forward to all the questions and comments that people will have. We're going to follow the usual format that we have with coffee and headlines. We'll have a little bit of conversation, and then we'll get into a special Q&A section in a little while, what I will ask for anybody that is watching is if you're familiar with uh, Brandon and James, please feel free to say hello to them at any time. And when we get into the Q&A section, kindly begin your questions with a capital letter Q. That way we will be looking for those questions. But enough of that. Let's get on with this adventure. Gentlemen, I have this. And, and for the record, for anybody that's watching, this is actually the very first conversation we've ever had. So I am just as giddy as anybody else to get to know you better. Um, the feeling is mutual, Paco. We've heard so much about you. <laughs> so um, so let's, let's start with what's going on right now. You guys are in Palm Springs. You are starting this, uh, this holiday performance, which has to do with your holiday album. How do you feel about that? Uh, we feel great. We, this, is our, this will be our third, or, well, fourth and fifth of, of the performances this week. Um, and we named the show Christmas Gift the same title as the Christmas album. Of course, we're playing a lot of things from it and some other things as well. We've got Effie Passero with us, a wonderful classical jazz pianist. Um, and the first three shows went went off a treat. And they we're did. That was they, so much fun. They do the same here in Palm Springs. That's wonderful. Now, I know that you that one of the beautiful things for us here in Puerto Vallarta is that you recorded your holiday album, your Christmas album here in Puerto Vallarta at local producer Carlos Santana's studio. How was it different? Uh, producing and recording an album here than in other places where you have recorded? Well, we recorded it in April of, of this year. Are we still in 2021? Yes. We are. Um, <laughs> so it was a, a, a little bit strange to get into the Christmas spirit in such a, an, an odd month, but somehow Carlos uh, creates this very peaceful Zen environment in his studio with um, with essential oils and, and light lighting and makes you feel so warm and welcome that it was it was really easy and a, a very comfortable place to record. It's true. I would say that's the biggest difference from here versus where else we've recorded. Um, I felt a lot more relaxed here than I did. We were the last time we did a major studio album, we were in Belgium and we we're in a cute little city, but it was very cute and very quiet. And PV feels a little bit more like home to us, I guess. So it felt a, a little more chill and relaxed. And it was, yeah, it was fun. For, for those people that are not familiar with you, um, I'd like to um, hold hands and with, with people that are just getting to know you as much as I am and talk a little bit about where you guys came from. Starting with you, Brandon, you spent the beginning of your career as an opera singer uh, in residence at the Met, at the LA Opera, at the Lyric Opera of Chicago. Uh, you've sung for Pope Benedict. You've sung for Nelson Mandela's family. And you have appeared in enough TV shows for more countries than one would be allowed to get through our local VPN gurus. And then, <laughs> and then there was that eighth season of America's Got Talent. Where do you find yourself more comfortable with such a variety of musical expressions? Um, I think wherever my heart is is where I, I am most comfortable. And I'm a Gemini, so that changes on a daily basis. Sometimes and hourly. He can relate because he's a Gemini also. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I think, you know, music, uh, people have been classifying music styles for so long, but to me, music is one language and it's a love language. And no matter what kind of music you're making, if you're communicating to people and touching people and 
in feeling touched in return, then I think that's where I want to live. Wh whatever genre that is, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I am classically trained, so that tends to be my, my strongest material. That's wonderful. And you, James, you were born in Adelaide, Australia. Yes. You you had a full time teaching position at Emmanuel College in your hometown, um, and you were, I believe, in charge of the strings section there. I was, yeah. I was the director of strings. I was a high school music teacher for seven years. Actually, I was a teacher at the high school that I went to, which is kind of bizarre because then I was on faculty with most of the teachers who were my teachers because I was it wasn't that long between in my studies so uh, it was a kind of a weird dynamic but I um, got over that quickly enough and I had a really great time but I also just then I decided I wanted to be a performer and to kind of pursue that like just give it a shot to see if I could do it and uh, so that led me to Los Angeles where I did a two-year master's degree and then I met Brandon one year into that um, he happened to be living in LA at the time and I was uh, close by in Orange County and we, we met. And then, uh, yeah, since I finished my, my degree, we've been performing full time ever since. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what was that about? <laughs> <laughs> Multifaceted. He always quits. So he gives, me a, first, he gives me a career. He gave me a career. And I always quit back that I gave him a career. He gave me a well, busier career, it's true. Well, for people that don't know, and I've done a little bit of research, um, Brandon, you do, if not all, well, maybe all, do you do all of the arrangement for your projects together? James does. I mean, James, I'm sorry, James. No worries. People get us confused all the time because my name is Brandon James. I know. Clark. And truth be told, the arranging process is, is very collaborative, um, mostly for many reasons, but Brandon is a very creative being. Um, so we of course, always want his input, but um, the way that things sit in his voice is, is like a very key element to the, how an arrangement is going to work. So usually it comes from a place of getting him comfortable vocally. And then um, I'm the kind of nuts and bolts guy that works it out for myself and for what other instruments might be involved. So it's like a musical jigsaw puzzle. So if I think about, I, I happen to know you play cello, obviously. You also play the piano, and you're doing arrangements for not only you guys, but also for other musicians. Where do you feel more at ease, James? Um, definitely writing for piano and strings is my is my strong suit. We perform on cruise ships uh, quite a lot. And so for there, I'm writing for a seven-piece band. Uh, wow. Drums, bass, guitar guitar, piano, and then uh, three horns. So uh, someone on wind, woodwind on flute, clarinet, and saxophone, and then two others on trumpet and trombone. Um, so that's really fun. It's kind of nice to have the, the parameters and then the colors to play with and kind of work out how we're going to get our music to sound. We've, do, we've done stuff for full orchestra before where I've also arranged for everyone, which is a lot of fun, but it's very time consuming. <laughs> how long have you been married? Well, three. <laughs> we, we had a gr green card wedding, which we called, so James could stay in the country and work. Um, and that was September 17th, 2015. Um, and then we were married in Puerto Vallarta. Uh, Puerto oh, wow. Puerto That's what we call our real wedding. The, the other one was just the legal stuff, which we kind of told our parents about. And actually, we got married at a Mexican restaurant in a kind of foreshadowing of the Puerto Vallarta thing. Um, our, our friend who's a, a simple celebrant married us over a free dessert and um, that was that. And then when we were ready for the social thing we, and to invite all of our friends, we, we got married in January of 2018 in PV. So let me, let me wrap this, let me summarize. You guys first had a musical co co connection because you met in California. Or uh, did you? If he, I might say that we had a romantic connection first. We might I would say <laughs> definitely. We met I online. I was being subtle. Oh, <laughs> everyone else knows. Who cares? <laughs> we met online on a dating app, um, and the first day we showed up, we didn't know that we were we were musical until we got to talking. And then wow. We were, and I hired James. Actually, here in Palm Springs was the first performance we ever did together. Um, I hired him as a musical director with a a small jazz combo for a, a Christmas, something that I was doing that was Christmas related. And the two of us played one thing together, cello and piano and vocals, and people responded in such a way that we thought, hey, maybe we can just look no further and have a career together. And, and it worked. 
Oh, I'm sorry. It's just, it's just sweet. It's just sweet. Let's play a game. I want to propose a game. Uh, and you let me know if you want to play. Uh, where there is creativity, there has to be inspiration. And I cannot imagine it possible that you guys do not inspire one another in one way or another. So let's start with you, James. I'm going to ask you to fill in the blank oh, and God. say, every time Brandon does blank or says blank, he inspires me to be a better musician and a better person. What would that blank be? Every time he sings, basically. I mean, that voice is so beautiful. It's it's a joy to perform with every time. What about you, Brandon? Uh, can you repeat the question one more time? The question is, you look what? at James or you talk about him, and there's got to be some things that he does that just inspire you to be a better musician or be a better person. So every time you see James saying or doing blank, I become a better musician or a better person. Um, every time I see him play the piano or the cello, I feel like I've become a better musician because his skills are so impressive, they inspire me. Um, and he holds me at a, a much higher standard than I hold myself, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. and, and then also when he looks at me and, and speaks in that Australian accent, I kind of am inspired too, because how couldn't you be? Well, that would work for me too, for the record. <laughs> Let me ask you about a little bit more about the Christmas album, um, because your choice of, of Christmas music was beautiful and meditative. We mentioned it at Coffee and Headlines, my daily broadcast the other day. I, I loved some of the arrangements. Well, I love all of the arrangements, but I particularly loved your take on, on Johnny Mitchell's River because it has some beautiful... Uh, uh, references to the original. Of course, Joni Mitchell references Jingle Bells in her intro, but also um, she, uh, James, in your arrangement, you reference Jingle Bells halfway through the song. Do a lot of people notice these nuggets? Um, some do. I, I kind of, when I arrange things, put things in for people who are listening at different levels. So there's like the really obvious stuff, but I'd kind of like to try and hide some little things in for the more acute listeners when I can. So yeah, there's some jingle bells there. I kind of morph jingle bells into something a little more, instead of, I guess, which was very morphy because my cello's out of tune. But um, yeah, I, I kind of, I like to, to play around a little bit and kind of put some not so obvious things in for people that are listening. Really, You, you are, um starting, I read, a tour around the United States called Chasing Dreams after your recently released album, Chasing Dreams. Um, how, how did you come about the concept of Chasing Dreams for your album? It's actually a, a combination of two songs that are on there. The um, first two songs. The first two songs. A Million Dreams from um, The Greatest, the greatest Showman. Showman and Chasing Cars. A song by the British band Snow Patrol. Uh -huh. And we felt like Chasing Dreams represented where we were at in our career and what we wanted from the album uh, in terms of um, we were kind of putting everything on the line artistically and financially, like it's a big undertaking to record an album at that level. And we wanted to see kind of what we could get out of it personally and for our careers. So it kind of just seemed the right title. The album features some beautiful uh, tracks, including covers of popular songs some people may recognize, like Roxette's It Must Have Been Love, or, or Don McLean's Starry Starry Night, which a lot of people call Vincent and think that it is written by Johnny Denver, but it's, it's a Don McLean song. Um, but what I find fascinating about the album is that after you released it, Music Connection magazine named you the best unsigned artist in North America. And for people that are not in the know, an unsigned artist is someone who is not working with a major record label. Uh, meanwhile, we have other high profile artists such as Taylor Swift that is so disenchanted with a record label deal gone bad that she's now on her own re-recording her previously issued albums so she can hold on to her 
the, the royalties from her master tapes. How important is it to you guys to get signed or how self-sufficient are you being in your musical strategy? Mm, I think when we first started out, we had this, there's this dream and fantasy that comes with being signed by a record label. Um, and I, I think that, that that fantasy is not all that it's cracked up to be anymore. Um, You're not alone. Yeah, but of course, when we both started out, that, that was the fantasy because who wouldn't want to say that, oh, yeah, I'm signed by Arista Records or this label or that label. Uh, but the truth is that it wasn't really probably a, a practical thing that was ever going to be on the horizon for us. And being self-sufficient has served us much better uh, in so many ways. In so many ways. There was a, was a Jared Leto that did that documentary about how he and the band he was 30 in, Seconds to Mars. 30 Seconds to Mars got beheld into their um, their record company and were kind of constantly making records to try and pay for the last record. It was um, a financial nightmare, and he talks about it a lot. It's um, We kind of never want to get there. In fact, I think that recording on that level really only works for people that are like in the top one percent or less like the beyonce's of the world the Taylor Swift's. they make yeah. they make money from records but the rest of us uh it's touring and merchandise really um and now of course content creating is is a huge part of being an artist that's wonderful and speaking of merchandise before we before we continue i want to make sure that everybody that is watching either now or watching the broadcast which we will make available both on facebook and youtube we will have show notes for this special edition uh, and there you will be able to find places where you can purchase some of the albums and the merchandise and all the goodies that, that Brandon and James have put together. Now, let me ask you quickly, let, let's talk about the Puerto Vallarta connection. How did you guys start performing here and when? Uh, we started performing in Puerto Vallarta in 20, I think it was January, no, sorry, December 2015? 16. 16? 16, yeah. December 2016, thank you. Um, a, a lovely lady who's a pillar in the community you probably know by the name of Amy Armstrong. Never heard of her. <laughs> <laughs> she called me one day. Uh, we, we'd known each other from Chicago. I, I, she was actually a, this siren. I heard this voice across the street from where I lived at the time. I was singing at Lyric Opera in Chicago. And I heard this voice that sounded like Adele singing an Adele song. Coming out my window it was a warm summer night. And I walked across the street and I had to find out who, who was that. Um, and it was Amy and uh, we got to know each other a little bit and I remember we were in South Africa when we got the, a phone call she said I, I've just taken over as artistic director at Palm Cabaret and I've seen your your new work with James and I'd love to have you guys down so we thought Puerto Vallarta have never been uh, never heard of it and of course as soon as we landed and walked into that magical place it's like the best thing that's ever happened to us. And we, we both fell in love instantly. Amy oh. the first time there, such a success. Um, and all the and the rest of the stuff at the palm too, actually. It was we felt looked after and we kind of were helped to learn the ropes about what it means to be a performer there and how to get people to come to your show and all that kind of stuff. And we just we wanted to come back immediately. James, you touched base on something that I would like to ask about. You said you 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 learned what it takes to perform here. I am sure that uh, every destination has its own peculiarities. What have you found most challenging to break in here in Puerto Vallarta? Huh, that's an interesting question. I, I what the one of the, the things that I love about PV is the the cross section of people that come there. We always joke and kind of break it down to gays and baby boomers, <laughs> um, but which is, I mean, effectively there's a ton of American and, and Canadian uh, baby boomer folks who come to Snowbirds that spend a lot of time there, and obviously it's a huge gay destination too, um, and that's kind of our audience in a nutshell. Um, so our, our, the biggest thing though is that it's a vacation spot too so sometimes it's hard to kind of um get in front of people get in front of the right people to let them know that we have a show or to gonna get them in the mood for coming to a, one of our shows because there's also a lot of drag performances in pv which tend to be i think a more vacation uh friendly or you know especially amongst the, the gays they kind of really want to go see something fun and party and a lot of our music is very heartfelt and emotional um, which is not necessarily everything you want on a vacation it takes a little more nudging to convince someone to come here a, a concert full of sad ballads <laughs> oh. trust, 
trust me, for those of us that live here year round, it's been a, a challenge to let some of the venues understand that yes, there are the tourists, but then there are those of us that live here year round, English speaking locals that would appreciate something else. You know, I'm not saying that that the tourism entertainment is a bad thing, quite the country, it's a wonderful thing, but it is so nice that performers like you are starting to make a name for yourselves or have made a name for yourselves in our city and are hopefully nudging the balance more in the direction of a better choice of, or a broader choice of entertainment. Yeah, I think it's all about variety, especially as James mentioned, the cross section of people that come to PV that I think there's, there's something for everyone there and, and that should remain that way. And the community has been so wonderful and supportive of us in so many ways. Uh, we kind of publicized our whole wedding and people were following along. And then uh, we were on out and about the, the cover of the magazine and people have just been so wonderful to us in, in Puerto Vallarta. And someday I'm going to make you retire there. Uh oh, I love it. Now, let us, uh, before we get into the questions that we, I want to make some time to, to look at some of the questions that people that are watching are, are, are asking, but I want to ask you specifically about the December 30th concert with Amy and Fernando and other musical guests. What, what kind of nuggets can we anticipate? What, what can we look forward to? What's going to happen? So the concert is called One Night Only, a spectacular musical extravaganza, and that couldn't sum up more what it's going to be like. Exactly. I, it, it's kind of like, it's going to be as epic as going to like a, a Queen concert. If you think about rock meeting opera, the classical and the pop kind of clashing together, um, mixed with Amy's sense of humor, as you know, um, if she's not saying something inspirational that makes you cry, she's making you cry from laughter because her comic timing is brilliant. Yeah, spring tissues. <laughs> well, yeah. I forget about the tissues. I'm like personally worried about what I'm going to wear. As you know, I'm going to be the master of ceremonies that evening. Um, I can use some tips and advice because I, I think that'll be the first time that I wear long pants this year or maybe the second. I'm not sure. But wow. um, I'm really looking forward to the Let's show. Go and, huh? Let's go shopping. He's good oh. at styling people. When are you guys getting into town? We will be there on the 20th. Let's go shopping. Deal. Let's go shopping. Well, this, this has been great, guys. Is there anything, before we open this up to questions, I want to make sure that we make some time for some of the questions that the audience may have. Is there something that we haven't touched base on that is truly important for you that the audience should know about Brandon and James? What do you think, James? We love Puerto Vallarta. If you haven't already caught that drift, and we cannot wait to be back. Yeah, we're so grateful to everyone who's supported us. And um, we hope that for people who are in town, if they get a chance to come and bring friends, uh, obviously it's a big undertaking that we're all committing to, including you, Paco, to put on a show at Tasha Vallarta, and we would love to have the have the support. Lots of moving parts and lots of, and three different price points too. So hopefully it's kind of accessible to, to most people. This is really good news and it's really important. I am, have no doubt that the concert will be very successful and that a lot of people will attend. And then of course, people here in town will have the opportunity to enjoy you guys in February. Is that correct? Yes, we'll be back uh, February 15th through March 3rd. We're just playing a limited run of six shows. Um, last year during the pandemic, we created a show called Broadway at the Beach, and I think about 50 people saw it because we, we had two shows and then we were shut down and then our pianist had to leave town um, so he didn't get stuck there. You know, it was a crazy time. Um, this year is going to be different. So we are going to reboot that show and include some new music and can't wait to, to be back several times this year. Excellent. And you will be performing at the Palm, I imagine? Yeah, at the Palm yeah. Cabaret. Excellent. Excellent. Well, this has been absolutely wonderful, gentlemen. I am so thrilled. I know that you have dinner plans, so I don't want to keep you here all night, but I do want to make some time for the questions that we may have. And what I usually do is I scroll back through questions. Again, if anybody's watching and you want to ask away, please add a cue at the beginning of your question. And I know that there's a very special fan that's been knocking on my door all afternoon because she wants to ask you questions. And I think this is a good time to let her in. 
Oh, Amy I, Armstrong. Have, ah, like, hey, girl. sexy lady. How sexy do you think I am? That's my question. <laughs> what, really? what is your question? Oh, you win. Sexy. No, I love these two. I'm going to tell you, Paco, this is such a treat, first of all, to get to see them. But when they came the first time to the Palm when I was entertainment director, I was blown away by their talent. And I'm so happy that they've continued on this journey. And, um, and I'm very honored not to just have you as master of ceremonies, but to have wonderful men like this that I get to perform with, as well as Fernando Gonzalez and P.L. Canella and uh, the other musical guests that we have for the night. It's going to be a pretty epic night. There's a lot music. of sexy on stage. It's a lot of sexy. I don't know if you guys are ready. Everybody's ready. Well, you know, Get don't count ticket. me in. Don't right. count me in on sexy. But I mean, I'm looking at Brandon and James, and I'm like, woo, hello. Oh, how <laughs> now there are okay. all of us. I'm sure. I just want to say this. This is not just. I mean, all of us got a little something going on. That's all I'm saying. We all got a little something. Going on. <laughs> cool. no, happier and i'm i'm glad we're all a part of this and part of the pv community you know as well as you being the master of ceremonies you know we have the port of Vallarta food bank and we're doing a 50 50 raffle that evening so 50 percent goes to the port of Vallarta food bank and 50 percent to the lucky winner so i think that's going to be an incredible uh event as well as the concert this is wonderful. I'm very much looking forward to it. And of course, folks, please know that we will have our quality time interview with Amy and Fernando as well. We're going to schedule that in the very near I future. I just got to break in here and tell you guys that you're all were sexy and buy a ticket for December 30th. There you go. Let me let me keep you here, Amy. Keep us company while we start looking at some of the questions that we, that we have. Uh, let's see. There's a question from Paula Person. Where... Where were you born and raised, and was music always your muse? Just quickly. I was born and raised in Southern California, um, and music was my muse before I even knew it. I was a shy person, but I have music in my family. My grandfather was a rather famous country singer. What about you? Born and raised Adelaide, South Australia. Music was my muse from the very beginning. Couldn't this give is, me away. This is awesome. Uh, my friend Dan wants to know where did the two of you meet each other? I think we already answered that, but if you want to revisit, feel free to do that. We met on Scruff in Los Angeles. Ah! <laughs> Which is a dating app. I mean, that's the way in the life right now, right? Well, how it was our way. To it. If, you know, whatever works, works, I say. Uh, Dan also wants to know, James, do you prefer the, the cello or the piano? That's a tricky one. I could talk about it for ages, but piano was my first instrument. And I think that it will always kind of remain a little bit that way in my heart. I wish that I had the opportunity to play it more. I do love the cello and I, I I'm, would never give it up either. I'm grateful. They're kind of things from different contexts. Like I can't do everything that I need to do on a cello that I can do on the piano, but I also can't sing lyrically on a piano as much as I can on the cello. So it's, I, they both have different uses. Excellent. Um, Liz Avison is asking for a link for tickets, and we will certainly include that in the show notes. I think tickets are being sold directly at Teatro Vallarta, right? Yes, yes. at teatrovallarta.com. You can also get them at Nacho Daddy and also at our shows that we do on Wednesday and Saturday at Nacho Daddy. Excellent. Uh, let's see. Lori is asking, where is the show? I totally love Amy. The show, we can all answer. This is going to take place at Teatro Vallarta yeah. here in Puerto Vallarta. And uh, if you love Amy, go see any of her shows at Nacho Daddy's beforehand. She would appreciate that very much. Uh, my friend Michal comments, this is not a question, but she, I know that a lot of people have started buying tickets and that makes me very excited. I know that some friends of mine. Oh, and there's going to be a VIP party after the show, I heard, for people that buy the, high, the top tier uh, tickets. Yes, there will be, which will have music and fun, and it's in a very super exclusive location, which we will reveal soon. Ooh. Um, Lori... That's, it's a VIP, baby. Oh, <laughs> VIP. My goodness. Lori Flamand Rap is asking, how much are the tickets? There are three pop price points for the tickets. Um, in pesos, it, let's see. Let me do it in dollars, and then Amy can sure. convert yeah. pesos because she's better at it. So the, the three pr price points in dollars are 30 50 and 100, which includes the VIP seating and the after party. So 600 okay. pesos, 1,000 pesos, or 2,000 pesos. Or in other words, poquito, más o menos, 
Un poco más. Yeah, well, we thought that was the best way to go because then you kind of pick and choose what price point you want. And I think that's the best way to go. And and I'm glad that we have those three options for everybody. Um, I want to uh, actually spend some time because I don't know that people, and I want people to realize what a fracking, crazy undertaking it is to book Teatro Vallarta and to navigate the booking of Teatro Vallarta, the coordination <laughs> of multiple musicians. I mean, this is not a show with tracks, correct? This is all live music happening and you're all it's collaborating all together. Here and then town and as well as Brennan and James. And we're, I'm going to tell you this, I'm so proud of that fact that we don't do that, that we have live musicians. I'm from that school. And I know some people have different ideas about that. And I'm fine with everybody's opinion, but my opinion for what I do as an artist is I love to hear live music and live sounds because when you're on a track uh, piece, you don't have the ability to get creative and go outside of that. You know, maybe you want a longer solo. Maybe I want to tell a joke or do something. And you can't do that with a track unless you have it all planned out and ready ahead of time, which is also a gift, by the way. But I love to be improv and creative. And that's one thing I love when I worked with Brandon and James in the past was we had that ability to go off script a little bit and get a little more creative. And you can't do that with a track. True. 100% accurate. Yeah. It loses all the spontaneity. I see a question here from Den again. Uh, it is actually his wife, Kathy. How wheelchair accessible is Teatro Vallarta? There is some wheelchair accessible seating. So it must be, I've actually not been inside the theater to know, but it must be, I'm, I'm guessing that they've made it accessible because there is special reserved seating for wheelchairs. There, there, there is special reserved seating, uh, Den, for her. So you have no problems with that whatsoever. And I can look into that more if you're interested and I can even private message you so I could tell you what to expect from that. That's something I can do because I've been there more than once checking out the shows and seeing how it's going to be for us when we do the show that night. Excellent. Well, Den and Kathy are dear friends with of mine, so I'm very, very happy to triangulate that affair. Thank Folks, you. it is such a treat to have spent a few minutes with you guys, and it's such a treat to have a few people watching. Of course, this interview will be available on Facebook and also on YouTube. Um, is there any last minute comment that any one of you guys would love to share with the audience? Oh, uh, we're just wishing you all a uh, happy, Merry Christmas and happy holidays. And we can't wait to, to ring in the new year with you in Puerto Vallarta soon. Exactly. Doc, <laughs> you want to come to an epic and wonderful show full of musicians that we, you can really, we sing with our hearts and our souls on stage. That's true. And everybody's just so excited about this event. So please, if you can make it, we'd love to see you there. What a great way to end 2021 and go into 2022 just with a great attitude. I'm, I'm going to make a, a personal confession to you guys. Uh, and, and this will probably give you an idea of how meaningful being the MC for the broadcast is for me. Uh, this year, on December 27, I will mark my 20th anniversary, having arrived in Puerto Vallarta for the first time, never having set foot here. I live deeply grateful of how wonderful my life has been in this city, and I cannot think of a better time to celebrate that with you guys on stage three days after the fact. So I am mm -hmm. just stoked. And I am so very happy and I am so grateful to folks that tuned in tonight. Uh, I would like the opportunity to wrap up the broadcast and stay put. Please don't go anywhere. I'll have a chance of a private goodbye with you guys. But for those of you that tuned in for this very special interview, thank you very much. If there are other people that you would like for us to interview, please let me know. And that goes also to you guys, Brandon and James and Amy, if there are other people that we should be hearing more from that have great stories to tell, that's what we do here at Coffee and Headlines. So stay put. Let me wrap this up for everybody that tuned in. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow bright and bushy tailed for Coffee and Headlines live at 1030 in the morning as always. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>